was it in 2012 or 2011 mm. after serving on these many boards mm -hmm. i remember one person getting so jittery and and you know saying but karen how how come whenever we're looking for young people who are serving on boards it's just karen on this board on that board mm. whatever mm. and by then i think i'd just been what was it in 2013? I'd just been appointed to serve as the chairperson for Nairobi County Youth Oversight Board. Mm. I come from Bungoma County. Mm. So this gentleman mm. um, calls me and he's complaining mm. why I am in all these spaces. And mm. then he tells me, Karen, kwani Nairobi hakuna vijana? Mm. Yani waliona tu wachukwe. <laughs> Mm. Karen kutoka Bungoma mm. akuja lead Nairobi. Mm. When you go to where's your fan? Karen. Mm. Nini, nini, Karen. Mm. And I said, by the way, you know what? I also do not understand, but I think there's someone we can talk to to find out why it's me in all these spaces and that person is God. And then he kept quiet. But then I took time to really reflect on 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 that. And I also remember I've been questioning why are there few too few women mm. in these spaces. Mm. Why are there too few young, young people, people in these mm. spaces? Mm. I discovered capacity, exposure, is is, is really critical. Because then I, I think from this the, from the serving and the spaces I had been in, I had had experience, exposure. I've been mentored. I've been coached. So I know how to engage in in invited spaces, in public spaces, in created spaces. I know how to engage. I have those skills. I can communicate. Um, and so then I have exposure and that's when I decided, you know what, I think it's useful to start a platform where young people get mentored to be the best they want to be in life. Those who want to be politicians, mentor them to have ethics and values and be in that space and thrive and make policies that are, um, are all about people, people centered and ideological based politics and you know, all that. Those who want to be in business, Pair them up with uh, business mentors, people who've been, who have succeeded to guide them in their journey, in their entrepreneurship journey. Those mm. who want to be in civil society, mm. again, guide them Likewise. in that. Yeah. Um, and so I started Emerging Leaders Foundation mm. to do exactly that. Mm. And our vision is we... So you set it up as a, as a what? As a, as a non-profit organization. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, we envision a society, a dignified society with values-based leaders. Yeah. Dignity is so key for us and even for me. And remember, having grown up uh, and having a childhood that I did and got to see the inequalities around society, dignity is so key. Dignity mm. is the ability to be and to become mm. without fear, favor or intimidation. Mm that a woman in the village can have access to medical care that is affordable and quality and mm. give birth in a, in a secure place in a hospital. Mm. That a child can go to school and access good quality education. Mm. That people across the country, whatever county you come from, you can uh, access basic infra infrastructure mm. for your ability to thrive. Mm. We can access equal opportunities. That is not the case, but that is the world we envision. And what will be the driving factor for all that? Values-based leadership. Mm, mm. So that is critical for us. Mm. So we we nurture young leaders. We work with young people below the age of 35, mm. um, coaching them, supporting them through different programs that we run. We have a leadership program called the ELF uh, Fellowship Program that aims at building the whole person. We mm -hmm. focus on the person. We talk about self-awareness, um, leadership skills, gender and leadership, mm. um, good governance, ethics and integrity, mm. pan-Africanism, mm. community service. Mm. Because again, we believe mm. that you cannot be a leader and, and not serve. Mm. And so we learn to serve mm. by actually serving. Mm. So cohorts then also identify projects, whether it's visiting a school or kids in prison, women, children in prison, having conversations, children's homes, planting trees, mm. basically adopt um, a, a project or an initiative and continue serving in that space and supporting and mentoring other young people as you get mentored. Mm. Uh, and body, soul, mind and spirit. Mm. Um, 
we have come to a time when mental wellness and just wellness in leadership is really critical. Mm. So how do we live balanced lives as individuals that you mm. can play, you can work, you can have moments when you get to rejuvenate yourself as a, as a leader, spiritually, physically, mentally, intellectually, and even socially in, mm. in, in the spaces you find yourself in. Mm. And then we get to pair them up with mentors in line with their areas of interest for a period of a year. And mm. we get to monitor and follow up. Yeah. Uh, and we've seen lots of success. So we've been able to um, reach over 10,000 young people in Kenya, but also in the region, mm. in a number of countries like um, um, Uganda, Botswana, but majority of the young people mm. just here in Kenya. Mm. We also have programs around um, governance and civic engagement. That's why the whole question about participation by mm. young people is mm. so important. Mm. We want to get young people from the periphery of yeah. decision making to the center. Yeah. So that means they need exposure, they need capacity, mm. they need to be taught that this is how you engage in these spaces and create your own space sometimes to then mm. just be able to engage better and make your voices heard. Mm. Voice is a big thing for mm. us. Mm. Mm. We might actually, a lot of times we assume that simply by virtue of us being human, we have a voice, but not everybody realizes they have a voice there are some voiceless, marginalized individuals and communities out there. Mm. Not just in Kenya, across, across the region. Mm. But now that we are working in Kenya, um, for the moment, that's really sad. And part of our work is then to make sure that we support individuals to find their voices and use their voices to speak up. And for those who are already speaking up, how do you use your voice in your space to then amplify voices of others? Of others? Mm. Like that is mm. critical. Mm. Um, and we are now getting into sector-based leadership. Mm -hmm. Just last year, in the month of November, we mm. did launch um, a program called Emerging, Public Service Emerging Leaders Fellowship Program right. in partnership with the Public Service Commission of Kenya and Emerging Public Leaders. Mm -hmm. We aim um, to mentor and support young public servants to become ethical and transformative in the spaces where they mm, are. Mm. Uh, we also have a project called My Sister's Keeper, which is targeting young female health practitioners within the health sector mm. to support them and equip them with, the, within, um, with leadership skills, mm. but to also support them to lead transformation and accountability within mm. the health sector. Mm. And so we are in a number of sectors, mm. economic empowerment for mm. young people, mm. Um, and those are some of the programs that we run. Mm, yeah, mm. it's been an interesting journey. So let's, I, and I, I, I love, I love the, the, should, should we call, should, the growth and scale, you know, the growth, scale and size and broadening of scope mm -hmm. uh, that has happened over time. From that small, well, not small, <laughs> from that very spirited vision at the beginning.